dear students today we shall study about rotational spectroscopy myself dr lakshmi bhatakur i am from the department of chemistry rotational spectroscopy or it is called microwave spectroscopy why it is called microwave spectroscopy because in rotational spectroscopy we use the microwave region of the electromagnetic radiation okay so rotational spectroscopy or microwave spectroscopy is concerned with transitions between rotational energy levels in the molecules that is the molecule gives a rotational spectrum if it is subjected to microwave radiation if and only if it has a permanent dipole moment dipole moment as you know what is dipole moment dipole moment is the uh, that is the distribution of electrical charges electronic charges amongst the atoms if one atom is more electronegative than the other atom that are forming the bonds the electron clouds will shift more towards the more electronegative species so in that case there will be partial negative charge towards the more electronegative species and the partial positive charge in the electropositive species and in that case we get a dipole so for a molecule to be rotational active that is for a molecule to show rotational spectroscopy it must have a permanent dipole moment as you can see in this figure this molecule has a permanent dipole moment this molecule has same molecule we are changing the dipole direction so dipole moment is a vector quantity so if you change the direction of the dipole moment it means the dipole has been changed has been changed okay so you see hcl carbon monoxide all these molecules are having some permanent dipole moment because of the difference of their electronegativity and that is why they are rotational active or microwave active that is that gives rotational spectrum on the other hand if you take homonuclear atomic molecule like hydrogen chlorine they are microwave inactive or they do not give rotational spectroscopy because they do not have permanent dipole moment remember one thing rotational spectroscopy can only be studied in the gas phase why in the only in the gas phase because only in gas phase we have quantized rotational motion in solid and liquid phases due to the collision between the molecules this rotational motion is usually hindered usually quenched and that is why practically rotational spectroscopy is studied in gas phase only now can you tell us which of these following molecules will show rotational spectra bromine you see it's a homonuclear diatomic molecule it will not be rotationally active hbr here you see can see there is a difference of charge proton this hydrogen is less electronegative bromine is more electronegative so there is a permanent dipole moment so this molecule will be rotational active what about carbon disulfide in case of carbon disulfide you see it's a linear molecule both side in between we have carbon and both side we have double bonded sulfur so the electronegativity of carbon and sulfur is almost comparable so there is no dipole moment in this case and the molecule is rotationally inactive now why do you get rotational spectra so in rotational spectroscopy i have already told that if we can change the direction of the dipole then only we can get the rotational spectra okay so here you see this is the direction of the dipole on applying a microwave radiation this dipole the if this this happens to be the direction of rotation so first 
this was the direction of the dipole in the second step the direction changes in the third step again it becomes straight then again this and dipole changes and this continues so if we move one two three four and fifth step we are getting the original one so at each fifth step we will be getting a dipole from where we started so we can say that the rotation of a diatomic molecule this is the diatomic molecule let us say hl so in the fluctuation in the dipole moment measured in a particular direction so in presence of this microwave radiation the rotational spectra changes its direction and as a result we get rotational spectra i hope i am clear up to this point now from classical mechanics viewpoint we consider that molecules are rigid rotors this rigid rotor concept maybe you have already studied in quantum mechanics the rigid rotors is an assumption where we assume that molecule in which bone do not distort under the stress of rotation so suppose i am rotating a molecule but the bone length should not change during that rotation so if i am considering this molecule the r happens to be the internuclear distance so this way i am rotating the molecule but that r should not change if r doesn't change i am saying that it is a rigid rotor so in case of a linear motion we have velocity is equal to distance divided by time but for angular velocity that is omega it is has to be radian per time so if i go over to the linear momentum that is we know m into v for angular momentum that is i into w where this i is m r m into r2 that is r2 is the internuclear distance this moment of inertia i is summation m i square m i r i square where r i is the perpendicular distance of the atom i from the axis of rotation that is that is the bone length basically so what is moment of inertia moment of inertia you already know but still moment of inertia is actually the mass moment of inertia which is a measure of an object's resistance to change this rotation state rotation rate it is a rotational analog of mass okay so now consider this hcl molecule so this hcl molecule can have three different moment of inertia in three directions one along the bone direction suppose this happens to be your z axis that is ia along the bond axis we can have ib along suppose this is the y axis and we can also have ic okay so any molecule for any molecule we will have three moment component of moment of inertia and depending on the relations between three moment of inertia components molecules has been categorized in various classes so in hl molecule ia is equal to 0 ib is equal to ic so depending on this rigid rotors are classified rigid rotors means diatomic molecules are classified into four groups they are called linear rotors in linear rotors ia will be 0 ib and ic will be equal so diatomic or linear molecules such as hcl acetylene carbon dioxide all these are called linear rotors second class is called spherical top molecules the spherical top rotors where ia is equal to ib is equal to ic 
methane sf6 sih4 these are examples of spherical top molecules we also have symmetric top rotors where i is equal to ib not equal to ic example ammonia the c h3 c l c h3 c and all these things and the fourth class is asymmetric top rotors where i is not equal to ib not equal to ic water methanol vinyl chloride formaldehyde these are different classes of asymmetric rotors so basically if i a equal to 0 ib not ib equal to ic then we call it linear molecules if i a equal to ib equal to ic we call it spherical top molecules if ic is equal to ib greater than ia that is symmetric top ic greater than ib greater than ia that is asymmetric top remember homonuclear diatomic molecules like hydrogen oxygen nitrogen chlorine etc they have zero dipole that is they have no dipole moment so they do not interact with the microwave radiations and hence all homonuclear diatomic molecules will show no rotational spectra that is they are microwave inactive molecules heteronuclear diatomic molecules has permanent dipole moment and in presence of a microwave radiation their dipole changes and hence we can say that they interact with radiations these molecules interact with radiations and therefore heteronuclear diatomic molecules having a dipole moment are microwave active or they will show rotational spectroscopy this mass is for today in the next class we will learn something more about rotational spectroscopy Thank you.